restoring a vehicle. Done right, it can be one of the most rewarding things you can ever undertake. Done wrong, it can turn your life upside down. Shake the money out of your pockets and squeeze the sanity from your brain. Stacey David's Restoration Series is here to help you do it right. So you can keep your money and your sanity. And enjoy the fruits of your labor. So grab a wrench and let's get cranking. Stacy David's Restoration Series is brought to you by LMC Truck, Keep Them on the Road, and Cornwell Tools, the choice of professionals. Hey, welcome to the Gears Restoration Series. You know, one of the biggest questions we get is how do you swap the transmission in your car or truck project? And that's a great question because having the right transmission will actually dictate how you're going to use the vehicle, whether it be on the street or on the drag strip or off road or all of the above. But to truly understand what's involved in swapping a transmission and if you should even do it, well, we need to start at the beginning. Come on. Fortunately, when it comes to choosing a transmission for your project, you basically only have two choices, a stick or an automatic, and they both have their pros and cons. The automatic, for example, is simpler to set up because there's no clutch. This means it's cheaper and it's much easier to drive on the highway, the road course, or the drag strip. The stick, on the other hand, is just more fun to drive. And it has less parasitic power loss, so more power gets to the rear tires, and they usually get better fuel mileage as well. Okay, with all that in mind, the question becomes, which one is the best for your project? And really, only you can answer that, because you're the only one that knows what you're going to do with the project. However, there are some variables in swapping transmissions that you may not know about. So to help you make an educated decision, we're going to walk you through the basics of swapping transmissions. Now obviously, the cheapest, easiest way to go here is to keep the original transmission layout. Now what that means is if the vehicle came with an automatic, you keep an automatic in it. If it came with a stick, you keep a stick in it. And that can mean reusing the original transmission or upgrading to a more modern version of it. If you're going to keep the original transmission, it's pretty simple. Just clean it up, have it rebuilt if it needs it, replace any worn out parts like clutches or torque converters, and then bolt it back in with some new transmission mounts and hardware. If you're going to be upgrading to a newer transmission of the same style, there's a good chance that you're going to need to modify the transmission mounts as well as the cross member and linkage. The good news is, the aftermarket is full of companies that have the right parts to make this pretty much a bolt-in deal. Now, what if you want something different? Let's say you want to get rid of a manual shift transmission and put in an automatic. Well, fortunately, you're in luck because that is the simplest swap to do because you're getting rid of a lot of components like a clutch, one of the pedals, and the manual shifter. Now, obviously, the first thing you need is an automatic transmission that's compatible with your engine. Then you'll need a flex plate instead of a flywheel and a torque converter instead of a clutch. And then you'll definitely need to upgrade your transmission mount, your transmission cross member, and your drive shaft to something that's compatible with the length and the spline of the automatic transmission. Other than that, the only real modification will be removing the original clutch pedal and closing up the floor where the shifter was. Now, depending on the age of the vehicle and the size of the hole, this could be a small job or a really big job. All right, now let's say you want to go the other direction and put a standard shift transmission in place of an automatic. Well, now things start to get a little more difficult because now you're adding parts. So first you need a transmission and bell housing that's compatible to your engine. Then you're going to need a flywheel, a clutch, and a pressure plate. You're going to need some sort of a throw out or release bearing, either mechanical or hydraulic, whichever one you're going to use. Then you're going to need a new cross member and transmission mount, as well as a drive shaft. Now, 
Instead of scrounging through a junkyard to try to find all of this stuff, it's best to go to the aftermarket because there's a lot of companies out there that specialize in these kind of swaps and they're going to have all the pieces you're going to need to do it. Okay, to make the swap, you'll need to remove the old transmission and flex plate and install the new flywheel, the clutch, the bell housing, and the transmission. And at this point, it's all pretty much a bolt-in deal. Since most vehicles that came with an automatic transmission don't have a hole in the floor for the shifter, the first step is to establish where the shifter needs to come to the floor. Then cut the proper size hole. Make sure you make it large enough to remove the shifter from the top so you can service it. Then you'll need to make a removable cover plate to cover the majority of the opening. This will all be hidden under the carpet. Finally, lay out the cover for the shifter in the form of a boot or a console. This will sit on top of the carpet and add the finishing touch to your install. Now, for the pedals, you have a few choices. Obviously, the simplest, easiest way to go is to find a factory set of pedals for your vehicle. Now, you're wondering, how do I do that? Well, since most vehicles came from the factory with the option of an automatic or a stick, finding a set of factory pedals is probably as easy as checking eBay or the local salvage yard. If you can't find them used or everything you find is junk, companies that specialize in restoration parts like LMC Truck will probably have what you need brand new. Now, if you can't find a clutch pedal, this is where you need to get creative. For example, if your current brake pedal hangs from below the dash and you want to keep that configuration and add a clutch pedal to it, you'll need to fabricate a clutch pedal that will not only work alongside the existing brake pedal, but also actuate the mechanical or hydraulic linkage that you're going to be using. This can require a fair amount of fabrication and engineering and an understanding of pedal ratios. Another option, if the vehicle has a frame, is to relocate the pedals down on the frame rail using a universal pedal kit. Now this will require time and engineering to get the pedals in the correct location under the floor, as well as floor modifications for the pedals to come through. Since the pedals are on the frame, the master cylinders will need to be located down on the frame as well. This will require an access panel in the floor as well. Now, if your vehicle doesn't have a frame that's accessible, or if you don't have the option of these other two pedal assemblies, the third option is a universal pedal mount like this from Willwood. Now, the cool thing about this is you can configure it as a hanging pedal assembly or a floor mount assembly, and you have all kinds of options on how you can mount the reservoirs for the master cylinders. You can even add the third pedal for the accelerator if you want to go that route. The only drawback to this system is that it was designed for racing and competition vehicles that have flat floors and firewalls. So, to graft them into a factory vehicle will usually require extensive metalwork in the tow board and the firewall area to get everything fitting and looking right. But if you're building a kit car or a competition vehicle, this is usually the best way to go. Well, hopefully this gives you an idea about what's involved in keeping and restoring your original transmission or putting in something completely different. And obviously, sometimes this can be very involved. But like anything else, the idea here is not just to bolt a transmission in. No, the idea is to have that transmission take you safely down the road. And this is something that anybody can do if you take your time and plan it out. So get out there, build something cool, and we'll see you down the road.